Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to Brave New World Blindfolded. So, before I enter Kefka's Tower, I gotta do a bunch of preparations. This is pretty much the only bits I'm gonna do on screen, the stuff that I have to do for the Coliseum here. Just gonna... Didn't use a zombification attack, so that's good for me. If I don't proc, I think I might be able to double turn this guy. So hopefully that's what happens here, and then I... Nope, I didn't double turn him. If I get a holy proc, I win, though. Danger here is zombification. I'm just hitting stuff and trying to kill it before it kills me. So... Okay, just three bio blasts. That's fine with me. Didn't need that holy proc, but okay. The next battle can also zombify me, which is why it's next on the list. As you may notice, one of the items that I've slated for uh, Colosseuming here is the gem box, and yeah, I mean I've banned both the gem box and the soul box, so there's no reason not to... Oh, if I... that was a zombite, then I got pretty lucky there. There's no reason to have the either of them when they're banned, so I might as well take the extra crystal orb, my decision is pretty much made for me. I'm gonna be doing two Colosseum runs. This is just the first one. The second one's gonna be a little bit shorter. Goodbye. That one was just a junk enemy. Stuff like scrappers and stuff is not even dangerous. One, two, three. So gem box is five down, and that's the last one I need to deal with. This guy is at least mildly dangerous. Apparently not this time, though. At least I think that was the Iron Man and not the uh, Maiden there. Or rather, the... Yeah, I think the Maidens. One, two, three, four. So I think this one's the Maiden. She just dies in one hit anyway. No, this is the Iron Man. Maybe I'm just getting confused, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four, five. I guess this guy could possibly kill me. But the Power Glove Hyper Wrist is really nice for this guy because he doesn't seem to be able to take me out in time, especially not if he uses Firestorm. Holy Proc from the front row, that's that's almost a game right there. I'm in the back row now, but that's not going to help him that much. Because the only thing I have to worry about here is really dying from poison and ca the occasional special. Alright, so that's it for Coliseum run number one. Or not. I thought he died in... No. Counterattack. Alright, let's leave now. And now for part two. So yeah, this has taken a couple attempts, which is weird because it worked like three out of four times at my test runs, but now it's not working at all. Uh, I mostly just want to show each Coliseum enemy once, rather than show every Coliseum fight I do in general. I mean, most of those guys were just schmucks anyway, but those counterattacks are really annoying. Runic is worthless. Especially if he decides to use his count his uh, special move anyway, which is like the worst thing he has. I'm pretty much relying on him to use S cross to heal me, but he just doesn't seem to be doing that a whole lot. Physical attack's also not that bad because Celeste can practically reach and out of it. Bolt. That's just inviting a counter attack for almost no damage. Hooray.
There we go. Some healing. I'm almost starting to think I should switch back to the other Zerg Rush strat and hope for three Holy Procs in a row. <laughs> There we go, now hopefully Celeste can do some damage. Or miss, that works, I guess. Another miss. At least Celeste is probably at full at the moment, so... I'm not in any super danger, but nor am I getting any damage off, really. There we go. There's some damage. If I could put Celeste in the front, she'd be really doing some massive damage, but... It's either full Zerg Rush or full <laughs> trying to tank it. There's no real in-between here. Alright, now I'm definitely getting somewhere. That's more damage for me, but I can take it so far. It would it's super nice when Celeste decides to cast a re-rise on herself, because that gives me a second chance if I die, but Or if she's taken damage and heals herself, that helps too. The attacking spells, except the really powerful ones, are not really worth a whole lot compared to her Lumina. No, don't start the counter-attack train up. Unless you do that. Lots of holy procs. That Oath Veil is very nice to have on. Hopefully he's almost dead now. Slash should be at around full at the moment, so... I'm not in danger of dying in the near future, but... It can turn around, so... Well, now she's definitely at full. Especially since he decided to go missing. Which is especially lucky if that was his special. What was that? Sleep. Yeah, that's not gonna work though. It's probably just a couple good attacks to finish him off at this point, but... Didn't need that. I could have used these healing spells on the other runs, that didn't work. There we go, another attack. Hopefully he dies, but I don't think he will. I think he's on the ropes, so. Especially if he keeps using S-Cross again. There we go. One more Coliseum battle and then we're out of here. And this one's a joke, so... Gotta make sure to select Terra though, that's the only caveat. If I select Celeste or Shadow, who's for some reason in the party by mistake, then I, I lose for sure. But Terra, I win for sure. There we go. So that's it for all the Coliseum. I'm pretty sure that's everything I'm going to do off camera before uh, Kefka's Tower. Now if I can just find the save option. There we go. Okay then, time to enter the final dungeon. We're going in. And I guess it's going to play a cutscene, which I can watch because it's on the airship. Hooray! I'm not going to read it or anything, I'm just going <laughs> to skip through the dialogue as usual, but... 
Well, I'm not going to read it out loud at any rate. Pretty easy to read it given the slow text speed in this game. It's not like Final Fantasy VII where you could get like a huge text box opening in like half a second. Okay, so... Here's the question is, which parties am I going to take... Which party members, rather, am I going to take into the final dungeon? I think it should be pretty clear that I'm going to take Umaro, because Umaro is as good for me as he is for you, essentially. S even though I'm blindfolded, so... I'm not putting my ca these characters into their respective parties yet, by the way. I'm just uh, shoving them down there to signify that they're going. And I think we can count Cyan out for obvious reasons as well, because... I can't really use him effectively, like... I can't use his Bushi higher level Bushidos, and Cyan's not meant to be played like Setzer, he's meant to be using the move you want him to use, he's not meant to be playing slots with him, so yeah, Cyan's out. Gogo, let's uh, take some Berserkers in here because we know that Berserking characters are essentially great, for the same reason as Umaro is. Gogo, even beyond the Berserking, uh, he's also got a plenty of other options because it's really easy to set him up so that I can identify him really easily, so I really like having Gogo -Go in there. So there's no way I'm taking either Gao or Gogo -Go out of my party. So that whittles it down a little bit. Setzer. One thing about this run is that uh, most healing requires MP, and MP balancing is kind of nasty here, so... Having Setzer is a godsend here, so I'll throw him in there right away. Celeste, she's been tearing things apart all game, and same with Terra, so they're obvious choices, I think. Oops. Shadow's kind of risky, but... The, well, I, first off, let's put Edgar in there. I mean, seriously, he's Edgar. What else is there to say? And Realms Region X and Flare and Meteor have been destroying all game. Don't have to worry that much about her, M about her MP with Osmos. Even though it's far more annoying to use Osmos here than in a regular game, there's pretty much no undead enemies in the final dungeon. So, that's not really an issue, it just comes down... And from what I saw, Osmos seemed to be connecting most of the time, so... Yeah, uh, Realm's definitely in there. Strago, with his Black Omen, can tear things apart as well. So, now it gets down to the four that is a little bit harder to choose between, I think. But, Sabin, like Setzer, is free healing. It's just really awkward free healing, because Sabin is often the character who I want to be healed, and he can't heal himself. So, not my favorite choice, but I'll throw Sabin in there anyway, and... Shadow, for all his weaknesses, his DPS is just so high. So even though it's kind of risky to use him, it didn't seem to be that bad on my test run. And spoilers, uh, if he was in my test run, probably means I took him. So, uh, yeah. So, oops. So, despite the fact that a lot of people seem to like Locke, I just find he's Terra's inferior in almost every single way. Like, uh, Terra has more HP right now, but that's really only, I think, because she has some sort of HP boosting gear on at the moment. And it's not because, uh, I don't think it's because she actually has higher HP than Locke. But regardless, uh, Locke has less MP than Terra. I mean, a lot less MP than Terra, although that's also partly because Terra's wearing the circlet already, so that I could, uh, get the full extent of her magic points. I haven't equipped everybody with everything yet, but I equipped everyone with, with all the MP boosting gear that they're gonna have at the end when they go through so that I could heal up at the old man's house. But... Locke has worse magical defenses as well, and I find magical defenses to be really important in this game because Image cannot uncover physical defenses a lot of the time. Although, to be fair, I don't have any Image casters in this party. Oh wait, that's not a party. Face palm. <laughs> I already said at the beginning, these aren't my actual parties. Um... The... If Terra's got an image caster in the party, she's fine on physical defenses, I don't really care, so... But, that being said, Bog is level 21, <laughs> he's a little bit low going into the final dungeon here, and despite his Berserker status, the thing is, uh, Mog 
isn't meant to be played as a Berserker at this point. Like, I mean, the Moogle Charm is meant to allow you to choose between his dances, and that's kind of the intent behind Mog at this point in the game, for a dancing Mog, so... And there's the fact that I invested uh, three levels into Palador by mistake somehow. So, and as you know, that's pretty much a death sentence to Mog, not prioritizing him in one direction, so... Uh... I'm gonna go with the boring but practical lock in this case, for sure. So yeah, Mog and Cyan, you guys can sit and clean the airship while everyone else does all the dirty work here. So now let's try and actually organize people into parties. Um, so the first party's gonna fight Kaiser, which means non-elemental damage is great for one, but uh, Realm is... I also want characters with really high magic defense. So characters who fit the bill nicely here are this team. I mean, straight out. And another advantage to using this team as it is, is that everyone here can equip the Flame Guard, so I can use Merton Strats as well. And that's helpful against Azura, I think. So that party's set right away, I think. Pretty solid. And so between the other two, I'm going to shove Umaro over here, because clearly if this team's fighting Azura, then this team's fighting Isis, and I don't really want Umaro fighting Isis. So, uh, straight out there. And I do want Shadow fighting Isis. Gogo also likes to do that battle. And I've got two image casters in the party with Terra and Shadow in, uh, in it. And also Gogo, who I'll leave there. Because he could ban a battery Terra, I guess, or do other roles. I mean, I guess he can do other roles at any point. Not much of a surprise there. And I'm gonna move Gao over here. Yeah, I know, that's a lot of Berserkers on... That's two Berserkers on one team, but... I think that... Well, two pretty much solely dedicated Berserkers on one team. But since there's a pretty good rock for this team, I think, and as you notice, uh, it, you probably notice... <laughs> You probably guessed that, despite all the things I said about Locke, he was coming with me, because he's equipped with his Esper. But, yeah, this seems the one that's already equipped right now, because they're the ones that are going to be getting to the save point before I do anything else. So, yeah, uh, got to be a lot of Berserkers on this team, and it, if you haven't noticed, Locke is also actually equipped with the Hyper Wrist right now. So, yeah, definitely a lot of Berserkers on this team. Three for the moment. Anyway, I think I'll just drop the recording there and then actually so that I don't have to repeat all that if because I mean that was like eight minutes of stuff so okay let's get this started everyone jump off the airship see clap falling like 20 stories in FF7 did have some precedence Ugh. Stupid sneezes. Okay. Switch parties. Do one more swap. Okay. Those screen transitions uh, when I'm swapping parties are really long, so... Left and down, air on the right side. This should hopefully be straightforward. Hopefully I won't run into any vector goils, because they're the worst. I just ran into vector goils. Whoop de doo. So, how do I want to start this? Uh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Well, I know I don't need to use the imp spell here, so. What am I doing? He's already on the first thing. Uh. Cure 2, something, something, region X. I want to open with Reach and X with this fight at least, because uh, this this fight can be pretty nasty, and Reach and X at the start, I find, uh, really makes a difference. Negative. Unfortunately, no one in this party has float. For the most part, it doesn't make a big difference, but it's not like I'm fighting the Earth Dragon here. Well, this is going kind of nastily so far. I haven't heard a lot of blocked attacks, I guess, and... Oh, there's Umaro coming into play. 
Hooray, actual healing. So now I'm just gonna be holding A for the, this point onward, for this fight at least. After all, I've got a bunch of Berserkers in the party, but... It doesn't sound like my party's doing super good. They're throwing out a lot of dangerous sounding attacks. Locke's still alive. Not that he would be the first to die anyway, considering his enormous amounts of HP and general tankiness. At least Setzer takes almost no damage from these uh, magical attacks here. Oh, I guess that sound could also be Gao using Gouge. That's unfortunate. Probably someone's dead at this point. But one of them is dead as well. Hopefully that guy's dead now. Good. Okay. See, that's the nastiest encounter here, and the encounters only get easier from here, so the encounters aren't really the worst part of Kefka's Tower by any means, I don't think. Oh. A couple of people were dead, though. So... It's not good, I guess. Skills... Magic, Cure... Actually, I was a little bit behind for some of those, but whatever. I made it through, that's... My strategy is I meant to make it through, not to do super well, so... Make it through with as little effort on my part as possible, and therefore as little chance of messing up. I haven't gotten an encounter... In the, I haven't actually... with this party, because the first time I messed up on my larger test run I messed up by put mixing up Shadow and Umaro's parties somehow. That was kind of dumb I guess, but there we go. I never uh, got an encounter through here since the swap. Shouldn't make a big difference. In fact, I think Umaro will probably be better at fighting these guys, but one, two. Uh, I feel another C's coming on. Ugh, hate that. So distracting. <laughs> okay, this is Setzer. I'm just gonna hold A, they can do their thing, and it'll probably work out for these indoor areas. What was that noise? Oh. What? Setzer's a mi- this can't be a back attack. Why does it sound like things are coming from the wrong places? Whatever, I heard something die. I don't need to figure it out if my party wins anyway, so... And they should. Maybe this is a side attack and... Yeah, maybe... I am starting to think this is a side attack, because Umaro had a large delay between when he jumped and when he threw someone there, so... That usually only happens when he jumps across the screen like that. It sounded weird, though. It sounded like the shrapnel was, like, far on the right side of the screen. No shenanigans with that. No shenanigans with that. Well, things seem to go somewhat okay, at least. Skills, luck, magic, cure... Didn't even need it. Luck, it's like the one thing you can do right now, besides randomly hit stuff for next to no damage at the moment. Don't worry, that'll improve a little bit. Uh, luck will definitely be putting both his MP and the... Uh, and his physical attacking to good use. Eventually, but not right now. Right now, he's just kind of given the Hyperist to just shove him out of the way while the real men do all the work. Uh. Okay, I don't like these guys super much because... Oh, I know what that is. That's the... that's Blizzard. Okay. I don't like the robot guys that fall from the ceiling all that much. 
They can use Delete, which is a move that just one-hit KOs people, and that's just nasty. I don't like that at all. Blizzard Orb isn't exceedingly useful in this area because so many things uh, nullify ice around here that... Okay, so the chaser guy is gone, but that opens up the door for these annoying deleting guys to show up. These androids. And I think it's those guys too because uh, shrapnel hit four targets, but at the, on the plus side shrapnel hit four targets, which means they're all somewhat close to deadish. Goodbye. Not quite goodbye. Okay. Uh, brown note. That means that I have to try the whole lot of things after this fight. Another guy's dead. Oh, that should take care of everything. They're gone. Good work, Setzer. Thing about these random encounters is I'm not even too concerned whether Setzer uses uh, attacking or defensive slots, because either way, it's a win. Alright, so now I gotta make sure Brown Note did nothing to me. Whoa, two people died? How did that happen? Well, it must have been Delete. Uh, exactly what I said I didn't like about that fight. No one needed a Remedy. Well, someone needed a Revive Vi, which means I was exceedingly close to dead there. Oh well. Skills, luck, magic, cure. I've got the MP to spare with lock, so... One, two. All the way down. One, two. So far it's been going relatively poorly. <laughs> like, during my test runs, usually it goes better than this, but at the same time... Uh, hasn't ended in a death, and it really shouldn't. So, all the way right, all the way down, okay. Ah, shoot, I locked in this slot, which means he's going to be doing that, and it's another set of Vector Coils. I swear the game has been doing everything it can to give me the worst encounter at every possible moment, but... I'll have to take it as it comes. At least everyone's probably at full again after that. Shrapnel doesn't even do much against these guys. I could almost uh, stand to figure out a better rage to use here, but at the same time, don't want to make things more complicated because that always makes things more dangerous as well. Oh, well that fireball's not going to do a whole lot considering I'm just about to cast Region X, but... The only one who really does any damage here is Umaro or Setzer if he gets something off, so... Region, yay! Hopefully I don't just nullify that with another fireball and I can keep on going. Setzer's just got tons of MP, because Lot's using all the MP for battle healing. And I hear a lot of attacks going through again. Hopefully they're hitting Umaro or maybe even Lot, because he's pretty tough against those things as well. What I want to hear the most is Umaro throwing people, because that does a lot of damage. Well, that's another fireball. I guess I need to reach an X again. Hopefully no one died from that string of attacks, and... Well, Gallo is still alive, Locke is presumably still alive, and... Umaro is not necessarily alive, because Blizzard doesn't tell me anything. Okay, that does. See you later, Vectic Oil number one. Normally, uh, I don't cast Region X, but with the majority of encounters around here, I imp the enemy on the left, because if it's a Diablo, so they're weak to imp, and that pretty much is a big nope to them, so...
hopefully this guy di dies soon. Okay, there we go. Kind of a death of a thousand cuts as far as uh, Gao and Locke are concerned. They're not doing a whole lot of damage to the Vector Goyles, which is part of the reason why I don't like them. Alright, let's see if anyone died at the last second. Hopefully not, because I've already used more Phoenix Downs than I would have liked to in this segment. Skills, lock, magic, cure, because I really don't want to run out at a bad time. I can always rely on life and life two, but I don't really like well, I don't really like the life spell. I do like life two because obviously it's a full reheal, but I don't really like using the life spell. If someone's dead I want them up back on their feet right away, not in five seconds after the command delay goes off, because that could be really bad. Left. Alright, so I went in the door. Now I could go two steps up and it would line me up perfectly with that door, but I don't want to be lined up perfectly with that door. So one step up, all the way to the left. So now I'm not quite perfectly aligned, so one step up and I can enter with no problem and be just at the entrance, which is important because otherwise I have to go really far out of my way to get to that chest. One. Ugh. Middle of that, really. There's two steps that I needed to count out. I already aligned you back up on slots, and you should still be on Mantodia, because I haven't had to use Imp once, because there's always been Vectic Oils on the outside. Oh, right. I should de-equip that Blizzard Orb, I think. Because... The Blizzard Orb isn't too helpful in here. I could use another Life Bell more. I'm not sure if the Blizzard Orb hurts the War Mech. I don't remember what his uh, elemental resistances are. So hopefully the Blizzard Orb actually does some damage to that guy, and Morrow's not just hardcore wasting his time here. If he dies in another hit or two, I'll, I can be pretty much certain that the Blizzard Orb did its job here. Because this guy does not have very high magical defenses. Oh, Wave Cannon. That's not super friendly. I don't have a lot of lightning resistance in this party, although I do have Umaro, so... Goodbye. It sounded like you did a death counter there. I'm just gonna take one more step to the left, just to get that out of the way, and... No Phoenix Downs, that's always good to hear. Skills, Lock, Magic, Cure. Boy, still requiring a lot of that. Mostly because I think Setzer hasn't been doing a whole lot for some reason. Or maybe I've just been forgetting his existence or something. Uh, equip, Relic, Relic, Umaro, Umaro, Equip, Top slot. There, now he should have the life bell on, which will actually do something. I don't think it's like. It'll do some decent healing, I think. One. Ugh, that felt weird on the control stick. Let's uh, just go back up here. One, two, three. Okay, so all the way to the left. Down, left, all the way down, all the way right. So now I go down left for a while. And I'll err in the downwards direction this time. This area is easy to visualize only because I turned off layer 2 when I was practicing this, so I could see all the ground. One step back up, all the way to the left, all the way down. Okay, I'm starting to get weirded out here. Because that was quite a while without a battle. 
I'm going up next. More of these guys. Not so bad if it's the one that just summons uh, an airbase when it dies, but I really don't like those androids. Couldn't you uh, use an iOS or something instead when they die? I'm sure all they'd have is like, I don't know, maybe they'd poison me or something, I don't know. It's not what I particularly wanted. I want to kill them before they start deleting me. Oh, no, it's this one. Crud. It's definitely androids. Okay, one thing's dead. Hopefully that wasn't just an Iron Man, and hopefully the Iron Man didn't kill someone, or pseudo-kill someone with Brown Note. Again, hopefully that was an android. Punches, don't, I'm not worried about those. Just don't want to hear any uh, deletion noises. Though it's hard to tell whether it's uh, delete or Gow or Lock. Well, that was clearly Gow or Lock. Probably Lock, considering Gow was the last person to move. Now that guy's dead. Tomorrow will kill anything at this point in the fight, because those androids don't have a lot of HP. Which is a blessing. That's probably the end of it. A little the worse for wear here, but... And again, it's one of those fights, so I gotta check everything. <coughs> and I forgot that I was on Relic. No one died, that's good. Three people needed remedies, but that's only to be expected considering they were on darkness from the last war mech. So that tells me absolutely nothing about what statuses they were on. Okay, there we go. I got the Mega Elixir. Now time to skadoodle. All the way down. Wait, I forgot to heal. Don't forget to heal. That could be a big mistake. Skills, luck, magic, cure. Probably wasn't a big mistake there, but... Always good to be careful. All I probably took was a couple... was brown note and a few random physicals. From enemies that don't really have that much power behind them. All the way right, all the way to the top, after the, these messages. took a while to happen there. Uh, okay, heard a missile. That probably erased everything that just happened, so... Goodbye to that guy. It seems to be like a just a standard fight here. I guess it's a Fortis plus three Iron Men. Not a big concern, really, overall. The worst thing that can happen, really, is a brown note zombifying Umaro, and then he hit kills someone else. Hopefully the battle should be dead by that point, but... Well, that should do a lot of damage. Iron Men really don't like this move. Because they're tanky with low HP, not so helpful against uh, an attack that does damage, cuts straight through those defenses. And goodbye to the Fortis, who is probably the sur last surviving enemy there. Item. Phoenix down. Gotta make sure, especially when those uh, gravity type moves are being thrown around. I didn't hear a brown note though, so I think I can be safe without remedying. After uh, how badly it has gone so far, I wouldn't be surprised if Locke was hurting in the MP department, but that's okay because I've always got Setzer backing him up. Originally had Setzer heal, and I was like, wait a minute, Locke's got so much MP and nothing to do with it, so. Brighten up a bunch. A 
Okay. Made it through all of that. All the way to the left. All the way to the top. No battles there, apparently. Which means there's probably only one battle left. Maybe two. All the way to the left. All the way to the top. One step to the right. Oh, well that tells me nothing. Battles in here are... Not very effort-filled considering I'm just holding A, but... They're at least mildly threatening. Goodbye to that guy. Which means this is another Fortress plus three Iron Men. <laughs> Pretty sure, anyway. <coughs> I'm glad whenever these guys show up, because they're not going to delete me. Delete can get pretty bad with this team. I mean, Locke and Gao can evade it pretty nicely, but... Imaro doesn't evade it. He's a tech, not an evasion guy, so... And if Sets is left on his own, he's like the healer, and he's not going to be doing a whole lot of good stuff against them, so... A stroke of bad luck could really make that battle go not so well. Is that the end of those guys? Item. <laughs> Skills, lock, mag magic, cure. Okay, almost there. Just run up to the top. This conveyor belt will take me a lot of the distance, so I don't have to worry about that. Yep, definitely on the conveyor belt, because I can't open my menu. That felt longer. Riding that conveyor belt felt a lot longer when I couldn't see it. Okay, let's see if I can make it to the save point without another battle. Definitely not. Pretty sure I have to go up ne I mean left next, but at the same time airing in the left in the upward direction is completely safe, so if I air in the leftward direction, I could uh, get killed by Inferno. That wouldn't be fun. Then again, Inferno kinda sucks, so I'll prob in all honesty, I'd probably just end up going defeating Inferno by mistake in this episode, and then Whatever, but... Okay, I think... What does Shockwave mean? I think it... I'm not sure whether... What uses Shockwave, so that doesn't tell me anything. I don't remember whether that's... A, uh... Searcher that summons... Androids, or a searcher that... Okay, missile. Or, rather, a missile-sounding attack. That, that means it's a good type of searcher that doesn't... Okay, what was that? Does something in this fight use a diffuser? Either way, diffusers doesn't exactly scare me if that's what it really was. I'm not too bothered by it overall. So, hopefully I'll make it to that save point without another fight. I don't even think I'll bother healing this time. Goodbye to that guy. Even though it was just Umaro attacking, which is usually pretty crummy because he's in the back row. Since it doesn't affect anything else after all. Okay, that was Solitaire. Attack. 
everyone's still doing fine. Goodbye. Okay, not gonna heal, just gonna charge straight on through because I probably won't hit another battle. There we go. That went pretty well, but it's kind of expected because that segment isn't very difficult. Ray, look at that stamina. Just rising up forever. And everyone else is gaining HP slash MP. So that worked out pretty well. See you next time.